holding employers back. All right, Andy, put your finger on it. What's the single biggest reason why guys like you, employers, are not hiring? Well, I think it's very difficult to come up with business models that justify the investment you need to make to create jobs when the government keeps increasing the expenses associated with running a business. You increase taxes, you reduce after-tax profits. You increase uh, health care costs with Obamacare. You increase labor costs. You increase fuel costs with the war on carbon fuels. And you increase, now they want to increase labor with minimum wage. On top of that, you've got this almost unnavigable uh, regulatory maze that's been created over the past six years. And it's very hard to create those business models that justify investing to create more jobs. What will you do if the push for a $15 minimum wage, and we saw this with the McDonald's demonstrations last week, what will you do if that's anywhere near successful, that the minimum wage goes maybe even to $10 an hour? I, I think you'll see a lot of restaurants closing. I don't think that restaurants can operate profitable if they're paying a $15 an hour minimum wage. So I think you would see a devastating impact to the country. In fact, even the $10 minimum wage increase that uh, President Obama is talking about, the CBO said that would destroy uh, 500,000 jobs. So it, it, the impact here would be, uh, would be much greater than even what the president's proposing. You know, the, the president says he's not anti-business. He simply wants the rich to pay a little more. He wants to open up opportunity in our society. And he's telling wealthier people, you're not doing too badly. Spread it around a little. Is that an anti-business attitude? Well, I think basically everything this administration done has, been, has done has been anti-business. As I said, all the efforts they've made to increase the expenses of running a business, then on the that's the supply side. That's kind of the Art Laffer approach to business. If you look at the uh, Keynes side, the, the, uh, the Keynesian economics that the president seems to like, the demand side, when you increase people's taxes, you decrease the amount of money they have to spend. When you increase fuel costs, you decrease the amount of money they have to spend. So you've got a president who's attacking the demand side, which is business. He's attacking the supply side, which is consumer spending. And then he's saying, why isn't there economic growth? Why aren't you creating jobs? Well, you can't attack supply and demand and expect people to grow. It's just not going to happen. And that's the situation that he's put us in. You run Carl's Junior restaurants. You run Hardee's. Yes. Surely you've got clout. You're a major employer. Don't you have a voice in Washington? Uh, we, well, we, I, I go to Washington and meet with, uh, with politicians from both sides of the aisle to try and get ra what I'll call rational business policies, things that you know, don't hurt employees, that actually create jobs which would help the middle class, the lower class, and young people in this country. And, and I, you know, you'd think we'd be able to make some progress, but I think it's an election year. I don't, think, I, you know, I don't think the president's a bad guy. I'm not here to criticize President Obama, but he does not have the experience or the background to understand what it takes to create jobs. And I think he interprets okay. actions by businesses as negative for people when they're really very positive. We're just trying to create jobs and opportunities, right. particularly for young people. Andy, we'll leave it at that, and we thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Stuart. My pleasure.